The title of this is Cosmological Redshift is Not a Doppler Shift. We want to talk about the two, the Cosmological Redshift and Doppler Shift. So let's start out with the Cosmological Redshift. I'm trying to give you an idea of what that is over here. This is our home galaxy, the Milky Way. Off in the distance is another galaxy. Between us and that galaxy, space is expanding. The universe is expanding. So let's say this galaxy is emitting orange light. That orange light will pass through the expanding region of space, and it gets stretched. So its wavelength increases. Increased wavelength is, is labeled a redshift. So back here in our Milky Way, we see a redshift in the color of that galaxy, simply speaking. And that's the cosmological redshift. And it's happening because space is expanding, light travels through the space, and gets stretched. Now, right down here on Earth, let's say I'm looking at something that's moving away from me, and it's emitting green light. It's moving away, the light gets, wavelength gets stretched, I see a red light instead of green, if it's moving fast enough. That's a Doppler redshift. Now let's suppose that green object is moving towards me. I will see the wavelength sh shifted towards the blue part of the spectrum. And that is called a Doppler blue shift. So this is the emitted wavelength, the original wave, uh, the initial wavelength, lambda zero. This is the the wavelength that we see. And there's a formula for the Doppler shift. Lambda equals lambda zero times one plus V over C. So if the velocity is positive, the wavelength that, that reaches you will be increased. If the velocity is negative, and that corresponds to a redshift, longer wavelength. The velocity is negative, the wavelength you see will be shortened. Shortened wavelengths correspond to what's called a blue shift. Now there is a parameter z, which is called the red shift. And that is equal to lambda minus lambda zero over lambda zero. In reference to those lambdas that we have over there. So if we use this formula in here, we'll have lambda zero here, here, and here. They cancel. We're left with a one minus, we're left with one plus V over C minus one. The ones cancel, so we're left with a V, v over C. And that, that is a non-relativistic formula for the Doppler shift in terms of wavelength. So the Z non-relativistic is then V over C. That's what we get. We substitute that in the here. We get V over C. So the velocity is equal to the redshift times C. Now in case of the Doppler, we can also have blue shift. It's just that we just have to keep track of the sign to see that. Um, there's a relativistic formula for the redshift, and that's the square root of C plus V over the square root of C minus V minus 1. And if we solve for V there, we get this expression. So here we simply have Z times C, and here we have some arrangement of Z times C. So these are formulas for Z, non-relativistic, and relativistic via the Doppler formula. And in terms of frequency, this would be 
where the wavelength increases, the frequency will decrease, and that's a result of that minus sign. Now what we want to do is look at an actual example, which we'll sketch out in an example. So what we'll do, we'll start out with a laboratory spectrum. We're stationary in the laboratory, and so that will be our, our reference spectrum. So here we are in the lab, and we're going to see a spectrum, and we're, we're going to look at hydrogen lines. And we'll have a hydrogen delta line, hydrogen gamma line, and a hydrogen beta line. And the wavelengths of those three, three lines is 410, 434, and 486. That's all in nanometers. Now we're going to look at a quasar. And the particular one we're going to look at is known as 3C273. So we're going to look at what that spectrum looks like. And so that's a distant object in the universe. And what will happen, because the light from that quasar passes through expanding space, the lines will be shifted. And these lines will appear something like this. So this H delta line, which was 410 nanometers here, when we look at that spectrum of the quasar, it's at a new wavelength. It's been shifted towards a longer wavelength corresponding to the cosmological redshift. And the value of that is 476 nanometers, roughly speaking. So we can calculate the z for that. The z will be the wavelength we're seeing. So it's lambda minus lambda zero. The lambda zero is going to be 410 nanometers divided by lambda zero, 410 nanometers. So if we work that out, we'll get uh, 0 0.161 for z. So we could say then, if you use the Doppler formula, which is not correct, we could say that with z equals 0 0.161, we could say that the, the velocity from the non-relativistic formula is simply 0.161 c. So if you use the relative, if you use the non-relativistic Doppler formula for this quasar, based on that z, it looks like it's moving away at 16, rough, little over 16 percent the speed of light. If you do the calculation using the relativistic formula, you would find this to be 0.147c. But those are not correct. That, it's roughly correct, but not correct. And it gets worse as the 
z value increases. This is a very small z value, 0 0.161. So in order to actually determine the, re so this is not a correct way to determine the recession velocity of the quasar. So here we are in our galaxy. We're looking at this quasar object out here. We see a z value. And by using these formulas, we would say that that galaxy is moving away from us at roughly, say, 15% the speed of light. But we're using Doppler formula, which doesn't apply to this situation because the redshift that we see is caused by the space between us and the quasar expanding. In order to get the recession velocity correctly, you have to have a model of the universe. And here is a very simple model of the universe. This is called the Einstein de Sitter model. This is for the recession velocity of galaxies. And there's a term involved now and then, which I'll explain. And this graph compares those results from the Einstein de Sitter model with the Doppler formula. The Einstein de Sitter model tells us that the velocities called then is given by this expression and now is given by this expression. Now what do we mean by then and now? Here we are in the Milky Way again. Here's the object, let's say, galaxy that we're looking at. And it emits some light that we're going to see. By the time this light reaches our galaxy, this galaxy, the one we're interested in looking at, has moved further away because space is expanding. So when the galaxy is here, let's say that is when the light is received back here at the Milky Way. So this represents the now or the present position, and this represents the then or past when the galaxy emitted its light. So here's the then and now plotted versus the redshift for recession velocity in units of C. In other words, I am plotting this part and this part I'm basically letting C equals 1. I'm also plotting the formulas that we had over there that I show here again, the non-relativistic Doppler formula and the relativistic Doppler formula. And they're plotted here, again, in units of C, so I'm basically just plotting Z in this part of that expression. And what you see is that the non-relativistic expression really doesn't make any sense at all. The relativistic one, oh, but they all do agree very well when, when z is small. That's the important part. When z is small, all of these expressions agree. As z increases, as the cosmological redshift increases, we see a divergence. Here's the then and the now of the sitter model. And what's really interesting is one here corresponds to the speed of light. So they are actually receding at speeds greater than the speed of light if, if z is large enough. The uh, relativistic case keeps getting closer and closer to c, but never reaches c. So it's a mistake to think of the redshift in terms of the Doppler formula. And here's a couple interesting quotes. There's a book called Cosmology by Harrison. If you go to page 236, he says, the truth is that expansion redshifts are totally different from Doppler redshifts. And the velocities 
cataloged by astronomers are not the recession velocities used in the velocity distance law. That, that's a Hubble law. We haven't talked about that yet. On page 240, he says it is a regrettable practice that creates confusion and ensnares the unwary. The damage done, however, is that students believe that this is the correct method. In a book titled Cosmological Physics by Peacock, page 72, it is common but misleading to convert a large redshift to a recession velocity using the special relativistic formula, which is another form for what we had over there. Any such temptation should be avoided. On page 87, he says, nevertheless, it is all too common to read that the latest, highest redshift quasar as receding at 95% the speed of light. So in other words, if you go back here and you look at a high redshift value, you can see it's getting closer and closer. You know, perhaps here it's about 95% speed of light based on the relativistic Doppler formula. And it gets closer and closer as Z increases. So here I listed out uh, three objects with quite different Z values. The uh, quasar that we talked about earlier, 3C, 273. And there's an object with a very long name over here that Lacey and company had looked at. That has a Z value of 4.25. And there's a Lenart, there's a study done by Lenart and others on an object that's designated with this name. And what I'm showing here is that one has a redshift of 8.6, very, very large. So if you figure out the relativistic, if you use the Doppler formula to figure out the, the use the relativistic Doppler formula to figure out the velocity, get 0.148c here, 0.93c here, and 0.98c here. Now if you go and you use the Einstein de Sitter model, when z is not very large, it agrees for the then and now with the relativistic Doppler formula. But as z increases, you can see the agreement goes away. We get 0.93c here, 2.58c here for the then, and 1.3c for the condition now. And for the large shift of 8.6, we get 0.98c. 4.2c, so it's actually traveling faster than the speed of light, and we get 1.35c here. So the point of all that is to show you that the Doppler shift velocity determined from the Doppler formula just doesn't apply because the red, cosmological redshift is not the same as the Doppler formula. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, now, this model that I used here, this Einstein de Sitter model, it's a very simple model, and the only reason I showed is the equations are very simple. Uh, I don't want to imply in any way that it's the correct model of the universe. There's a better model. It's called the Lambda CDM model. The CDM stands for cold dark matter, and the Lambda is the cosmological constant which is showing that the universe is accelerating. But the general idea here is to show what's quoted here, that you cannot use the Doppler formula for large redshifts to get an accurate representation of the recession velocity of galaxies.